It takes 585 joules of energy to raise the temperature of 125.6 grams of mercury from 20 to 53.5 degrees Celsius. Calculate the specific heat capacity and the molar heat capacity for mercury. Let's start with the specific heat capacity, which is represented by a lowercase s. And we have to go back to this formula that we've seen before. So the heat equals the product of the molar heat capacity, the mass, and the change in temperature. But this time around, what we're going to do is that we're going to solve for the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity. So the specific heat capacity is going to equal the heat over the product of the mass and the change in temperature. So all that we need to do now is just actually put the numbers in here. So we have 585 joules of energy, 125 grams of water, ooh, 0.6 grams of water, sorry, and it, the temperature changes from 53, I'm sorry, from 20 to 53, so it's an increase in temperature. So remember, final temperature minus initial temperature, so 20 degrees. And that is going to be equal to 0.139 units, joules, over grams times degrees Celsius. We're not done because we want to calculate also the molar heat capacity for mercury. Okay, so down here we're going to have the molar heat capacity. And this is for one mole of the compound. We have 125.6 grams. So this number that we calculated refers to the 125.6 grams, not to one mole, but we're still going to use this and see how many grams are in a mole of mercury. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. One, it's, it's just a conversion. Joules over grams times degrees Celsius. I'm going to change the grams of mercury to moles of mercury. So the atomic weight of mercury, 200.6 grams per mole of mercury. My units, my grams cancel. And notice that now I have joules over degrees Celsius times moles. So we'll do that calculation real quick. 27.9 joules over degree Celsius times moles. So that is your molar heat capacity, and this is the specific heat capacity that they gave us for this much mercury.